I found an amazing list of commonly misused GRE words from CrunchPrep and the link is in the description. And I think there are two amazing benefits from me going through this list. First of all, you are going to learn very appropriate GRE vocabulary. Some of these words, like the ones you can see on screen, aberrant, abhorrent, come up all the time in the GRE. So that's the first main benefit. The second main benefit is that you can avoid being confused between the two different words in these sets. So for example, did you know the difference between aberrant and abhorrent? And that will help you not only for the GRE to not be confused, but also in real life, so you don't mistake those words and say what you don't mean to say, and instead say what you meant to say. Now, I won't necessarily know all of these words, and I might make mistakes too, being confused between one definition and another. So this is going to be a learning experience for me too. I'm going to give you what I think before having a look at what they say, so you can see how a real life English speaker and tutor handles these commonly confused and misused words. Obviously, I'm not going to go through the whole list in one go. That would be slightly too long of a video, but we shall see how we go. So let's get to the first pair. Aberrant and abhorrent. Now, I do know the difference there. Aberrant, in my opinion, means unusual, wrong, erroneous, anomalous. You get a result that doesn't fit in with the other results and you say, oh, that's an aberrant result. Whereas abhorrent means disgusting, wicked, horrible. It has that connotation of something that you abhor, you hate, really. That's how I understand the two words, but let's see how they define it. Aberrant is an adjective and means abnormal, untypical, yep. And then they give you an example, which is really good. So you can look at the example. This year has witnessed quite an aberrant weather compared to the entire decade. Whereas abhorrent means repugnant or loathsome. Yes, disgusting. She finds violence in films abhorrent. Great. So I knew that one. Obviously, the main thing here is that you learn. Accept versus accept. Probably two of the most commonly mistaken words, not only for the GRE, but also in real life. People make this confusion all the time. To accept something is to let it happen. You don't necessarily agree with it. Sometimes you can accept something you don't like, but it means you're permitting it, you're allowing it, you're accepting it. Whether you like doing so or not, you're accepting it. Whereas accept is like an exception. It's the one-off. It's the thing that breaks the rule. I like all sports except football, but not football. So quite different definitions there, but very commonly confused. What do they say? Accept is a verb, I means to take, receive, or tolerate. Yeah, that's a good point, actually. I was focusing on the tolerate definition. But also, you can accept a gift. You just receive it. So that's a good point. There is another definition there that I missed. I did not accept the gift she gave me for my birthday. Whereas accept, what do they say? It means other than, apart from. I like all of these things except apart from this thing. Okay, let's carry on here. Adduce versus deduce. I don't know if I do know the difference there. I know deduce means to derive from the available evidence something, to work something out from what information you have available. Adduce. I don't know without looking. Does it mean to add to something? Adduce. I actually don't know. I don't know the difference. I don't even know the word adduce, let alone the difference with adduce. Adduce is a verb and means mention something as evidence or proof. Mention something as evidence or proof. Hmm, let's read the sentence. In support of their decision, the committee adduced data from schools in the other districts. Right, so it kind of does mean to add something. You're adding evidence to the discussion to support your point. He adduced information to persuade the audience of his case. The committee adduced data from schools to show as evidence or proof. I did not know that word. Deduce, let's see if I was right. It means to reach a conclusion by reasoning or evidence. Yes. I can deduce from your behavior, from that evidence, that you are frustrated. Okay, so I did know deduce, but adduce to add data, information, evidence, proof, or mention something 
in support of what you're saying. Very interesting. Okay. Adapt versus adopt. I think I do know the difference there. To adapt is to be flexible and change according to the circumstances. To adopt is to take something on. You can adopt a religion, adopt a pet, you're taking it on. Whereas adapt is something very different, means being adaptable, being flexible, changing with the circumstances. They say adapt is a verb, which means to alter for a new use. Yeah, you can adapt an object to repurpose it to do something else, that's true. Those who adapt to changes end up being successful. Yeah, okay. Adopt is a verb, which means to take on or assume something. You should adopt some good habits if you wish to be successful. Obviously, it doesn't have to be an object. It could be a behavior like adopting good habits, taking them on, embodying them in order to be successful. Okay, I can understand why people might be confused because the words look similar, but they are different. I guess another one to put in here would be adept. Okay, A-D, vowel, P-T. To be adept at something means to be skillful at that thing. So maybe some people would be confused with that word because it also looks similar. But to be adept at something is to be talented or skilled at that thing. Three AD PT words there for the price of one. You guys are lucky. If you're learning anything, by the way, from this video, please do like, comment, and subscribe as always. Let's keep going. Advice versus advice. Super commonly confused. Again, in real life, let alone in the GRE. So if you learn all of these confusions and avoid them yourself, you are gonna speak English and write English so much better than the vast majority of people. Advice is the noun, you give advice, whereas advise is the verb, she advised him. So when you're doing the action, when it's a verb, it's advise with an S, but the actual thing that you're giving is advice, see the noun. Advice is a noun, it means recommendation or counsel. Good advice, practical advice. I guess I should have added what actually advice is. I assume many of you might know that, but advice is like tips, recommendations. Whereas advise, they say is a verb and means to offer advice to someone, it's the verb, exactly. My grandfather always advised me, very different from advice, which is the noun. Affect versus effect. Wow, if I thought anything could not be more commonly confused than advice or advice, I've just seen the next one. Probably the two most commonly confused words in the entire English language. Literally, if you can avoid getting these two words confused, you are ahead of so many people. I see this all the time. To affect with an A is the verb. She affected him by her behavior. It's the verb. Pollution affects the environment, verb. The bad results affected her mood, verb. If you don't listen to her, she can't affect you, verb. Very different from effect, noun. Effect is the thing itself, special effects. Her behavior had a profound effect, noun. It's a thing, it's an effect, it's a noun. Let's try and do a sentence that has both words. I desperately want to affect his behavior and produce the desired effect. Okay, I'm emphasizing the A and the E there. Obviously, you pronounce it a bit more similarly, affect and effect. They sound a bit similar when you say it more calmly, but I'm really stressing the affect being verb and effect being the noun. Very commonly confused. Affect is a verb, they say. It means to influence or change something. The cyclone affected the low-lying areas of the town. You pronounce it affected, by the way. I shouldn't stress it all the time. The cyclone affected the low-lying areas of the town. Effect is a noun, that means result, produce a result. The effect of over-medication is often underestimated. So you don't pronounce the E as harshly as I do. You don't say effect. You say the effect of over-medication is often underestimated. I hope you understood the difference there because this will come up countless times in your life and it's good to get the distinction clear. Afflict versus inflict. Ah, to be afflicted is to be burdened or surrounded by something, to be afflicted by the plague or bad weather. Almost like cursed. To be afflicted is to be cursed, whereas inflict is when you're doing something. 
she inflicted great violence on him. So afflict, I think of more as a passive suffering to be afflicted by something, whereas to inflict is an active doing something. They're both verbs, but inflict is more deliberate. Let's see what they say. Afflict is a verb and means to give pain or grief to. Exactly. The disease afflicted the population, caused the suffering. Whereas they say inflict is a verb and means to impose something unpleasant. So they're both unpleasant, but notice inflict, you're imposing it. You're putting it on deliberately. Some bees are capable of inflicting a painful sting. I guess it doesn't always have to be deliberate. It's just anything that is active. You're doing it. You're inflicting something. Affluent versus effluent. <laughs> Very different there. Affluent means to be rich, to be well-off, to be affluent. Whereas effluent means like sewage, waste, I believe. The flu is like the flow of sewage, effluent. What do they say? Affluent is an adjective. It means rich, yeah. He's more affluent than the king himself. Whereas effluent is a noun. It means liquid waste. The factory has been accused of releasing various effluents into the nearby river. Effluent is a rarer word. But yes, it's disgusting. Sewage, excrement, effluent. Very different words there. Allude versus allude. I think I know the difference. So allude is to allude to something, to reference something subtly without directly saying it. Her comments alluded to his bad behaviour. So she might say, well, the way you behaved last week, she's alluding to something bad that he did. You're referring to it without being terribly direct. Whereas elude means to escape, to avoid something. She eluded justice by fleeing the country. So actually quite different words. Let's see if they agree. Elude is a verb and means to refer to something indirectly. You're not stating it obviously and loudly. You're kind of tacitly referring to something. You're alluding to it. It's an allusion. Not with an I, not illusion. Allusion. You're making an allusion by quietly saying something where everyone knows what you mean, but you're not quite saying it. The patient alluded to some health problems without being specific. They're not saying directly what is wrong with them. Whereas elude means to escape from, especially by cleverness. The culprit somehow managed to elude prison sentence. There we go. Okay, let's do one more one for this video. And again, hopefully this is helping you. Please do let me know if you are enjoying this first video in the series. Here we go, actually. Illusion, just what I was saying. An illusion, again, is like a reference to something that's not particularly direct. You're referring to something, sometimes metaphorically or literarily. The painting had great allusions to certain biblical scenes. It's referring to a biblical scene. Maybe not super obviously, but it's there. Whereas an illusion is like a magic trick. It's not actually there. You think you're seeing something, but it's an illusion. There's nothing actually there. How do they describe it? Illusion is a noun. It means passing reference to something. The rapper's lyrics contain misogynistic anti-women illusions. So references to things that are anti-women. Whereas an illusion is a false appearance, a mistaken belief. Yes, I guess an illusion doesn't always have to be visual. Someone can have certain beliefs, for example, that are actually an illusion, they're not real. But more often, an illusion with an eye is to do with a visual mistake. They say reality is an illusion, albeit a very persistent one. Obviously, they're being slightly tongue in cheek there. I don't particularly believe that reality is an illusion, it's all fake, but that's what they're saying there. Anyway, those were 10 pairs of commonly confused words. And I really enjoy making this series because I'm learning as well. And I hope you are too.